Hi, it's Mr. Baumgarten here, and we are talking pseudocode, everyone's favorite topic. I have here a simple question. For a given set of person heights, output how many have a height between 150 and 200 centimeters inclusively? Now, you will need to pay attention to keywords such as this because that will have a bearing on how you write your pseudocode. So I've written up an example solution here. I've created a heights array. So in theory, actually, this part would probably come with the question. Uh, you know, here's a set of heights for you to test it out on. And I've created a total variable and I'm setting that, initializing that to a zero. And then I'm saying, let's loop. So uh, from n to, uh, loop using the n variable from zero to the length of the heights array. Uh, then we look up the array, take the nth person, put their, value, their height into this person value, and then if the person is, is greater than or equal to 150 and it's less than or equal to 200, increase the total by one, end the if, end the loop, and output the total. Note if this said exclusively or not including, then that would just be greater than and less than, not uh, greater than equals, less than equals. A couple of other things. Because it's pseudocode, and so there isn't really a set language as such, right? it is just structured English. Instead of the word loop, an end loop, I could have used the word for. Uh, because uh, for, you know, so if the, if the programming language you're used to uses the word for, and I could have said for n from zero to length, you know, length of heights. Um, and I could have done heights dot length instead, or you know, some other things. So long as it's clear what your intent is, then you are okay. So, here's, so this is a bit of an example of pseudocode. I've got here another example, and then the next video we're going to do a couple of trace tables with these. Typically, you would see. Uh, the words input and output used rather than read line and print because different languages again interact with the user in different ways. If it's JavaScript, you're going to say console.log, or you might be writing to a HTML element. If it's Python, you'll just say print, whereas if it's Java, you'll be doing system.out.println, right? And that just gets too confusing, that's not clear. Just simple input and output, keep it simple. All right, so here, calculate the average of all numbers input that are between the range of 0 and 100. What I should have added to, to this question is, and, and then stop when the number is outside that range. Uh, and I might just add that. Stop. When the number is outside that range. All right, let's make this question complete. Now, I have a couple of deliberate errors in my pseudocode here. Let's see if, maybe you should pause the video at this moment and see if you can spot them. Right, I'm back. So what I've done here with my pseudocode, I'm, because I know I'm gonna create an average, I know that an average is calculated by taking the total of all the numbers and dividing them by however many numbers there are. So I've created a count variable and a total variable to keep track of those two pieces of information. I am then inputting a number. And I'm saying, uh, right, so I'm inputting a number into a variable n while my n is bigger than zero and it's less than 100. Let's take the total. Uh, uh, put n into total, put one into count, and then reloop. So, I don't know if you noticed, but there are three mistakes with this program. Firstly, when I am looping, I am not re-inputting n. So n is never going to have the chance to change. All right? I am taking my total, putting n into it. I'm taking my count, putting one into it and then I'm not asking for what the next new number is. The other thing I'm doing is I'm not increasing total or count, I am replacing total and count with, so replacing total with n, replacing count with one, rather than increasing both of them. So what should the answer have looked like? Let me show you. So this is what I came up with as an alternative. Count 
has been set to zero. Zero is going into count. Zero is going into total. Input n. While n is greater than zero and n is less than 100, total is being set to total plus n. So look up whatever's in total, add n to it, store the answer into total. Look up count, add one to it, store the answer in count, input a new n, and then here's the end of my loop. So I keep looping while those things are true, and then average is equal to total minus, divided by count, output the average. Now what would happen if I was to just look at that first one and I could not spot the error? That is where trace tables come in. Trace tables are a method for us to manually test our own algorithm and where we become the computer. That will be the content of the next video.